My name is Jeffrey Davis, and this is Radio Entrepreneurs. Uh, I'm here in the studios speaking uh, with Larissa Newworth of John Leonard, and we're going to talk today about social uh, recruiting. We are. It's the new buzzword in the industry, and even though it's been around since about 2008, 2009, Right now, it's really hitting the blogosphere, and a lot of people are talking about, is it a good thing, is it a bad thing, and some people are saying it's not even a real thing. So I thought it would be a great topic for today, and, and really, in the new year, thinking about how things are evolving and changing, and how we're going to access the talent pool here in Boston. Great. So why don't we first describe social recruiting? So if you go to Wikipedia, which is where I always go first, um, it talks about it being a social and recruiting, it talks about it being social recruiting of candidates through social platforms, like social media profiles, blogs, online communities, and online communities would be LinkedIn groups or even um, even Twitter communities that are, you know, having what's actually conversation. So most of what happens on Twitter is very unidirectional. Um, here's an offer, or here's an article, or here's how you should be doing things, or here's my five tips for a great new year. But if you do these social media channels correctly, what you're really doing is you're dialoguing. And it's great when you can dialogue with your customers. It's great when you can dialogue with industry leaders in your sector and really understand sort of what are the prescient topics and, and what are people talking about and join in the conversation. And when you join in, you really want to position yourself as an expert. So for me, looking at both sides of the fence. You want to position yourself as an expert, whether you're a job seeker or you're um, looking to position your company and yourself as an expert in your field. So it, it, it runs both ways. And face it, with the average person staying at a job about three point something years, everybody's a job seeker. Everybody's, yeah, I'm happy where I am, but you know, I keep my eyes open. I like to know if I'm getting paid fairly. I like to know what's going on out there. So. Um, anyway, so social, social recruiting, I believe, is real. And like anything else, um, the death of the resume, or you, know, you, can't, you can't step away from in-person, right, Jeffrey? Yeah. Um, interactions. You can't computerize everything. You can't digitize everything. But what you can do is you can make information more targeted through channels like this. So that's really what they do in social recruiting. Right. So there's sites, right, for social recruiting where um, a, lot of, a lot of jobs are posted on sites like Indeed and Simply Hired and Career Builder. Facebook now has Facebook jobs. Twitter now has Twitter company profile pages. And that's another really good way to get out what is your company all about, what do you do, and a real conversational way. So um, to do it effectively, to do social recruiting effectively, you want to build a community and facilitate communication within that community. And it's the connections between members that really sort of synergistically, in the mix, connect the job seekers with the jobs that are out there. Right. Okay. So do you want to give us more examples? Sure. So, you know, with like, um, <laughs> so with... Um, software as a service hiring tools are something that's kind of new and fun and can really help us because when you have a big employment, unemployment base like we do or people in jobs that are now feeling more comfortable or comfortable enough to consider really moving, some of these software as a service hiring tools are really helpful. So one of my favorite ones that I, I read about a lot and I, I wish that, um, that we could even think about using ourselves is the Resumator. So it's a cloud-based applicant tracking system. So if you're not in the hiring world, you're used to your contact management system right. where you have you know, all of your contacts and all the ways to reach them and all of your streams of conversation with them. Well, in an applicant tracking system within the staffing industry, you have all the documents you have there resumes, you might have a couple different versions, you might have um, some, re some references from people that they've worked with. But these, um, the Resumator in, is an applicant tracking system that schedules, that's very collaborative, and that centralizes feedback during the process of interviewing. So it really seeks to, in a larger, not a super large, but even in, a, in, a, in, an, in an environment where there's more than one person who is 
interviewing to collaboratively get the feedback back through each step of the interview process. So it's really good. And it you can quickly um, source through candidates through things like online quizzes that talk about um, their qualifications or their competencies. Or some of these quizzes have open-ended questions that talk about, um, you know, give you a sense of the person, how they think, what, what they might be like, and how they might fit into your, your organization. Right. So those are really tools that give you really good information in a very speedy and efficient way. And when you're dealing with literally a mountain of resumes coming your way, you need a way to sort of sort through them without throwing the baby out of the bathwater. Right. So um, I think another, you know, we've, we've heard about crowdsourcing, right? Crowdsourcing for funding. Um, that's also happening within the hiring world. And one of my favorite Boston-based startups is a crowdsourced assessment tool called Smarterer. So if you're super, super smart, you're smarter than not only your neighbor, but you're super smarter. Um, it's a crowdsourced test creation um, site that has, has over 800 tests in many different fields. They've had 1.8 million tests taken. When you take a test, which is a crowdsourced test, other people add to it and take away from it, um, then you get a badge. So mm -hmm. there's the gamification part of it. And there's this, there's this blog that came out this week called my resume, no, my career, my career is not a game. And it was sort of a backlash to a lot of this gamification. What's your clout score? How many Twitter followers do you have? And, you know, you can't number everything to rank someone. So you have to meet them and, and understand what they're about. But I think things like Smarterer can help us to quantify the skill set in jobs that don't have typically the usual testing. So with John Leonard, we have a lab, and we have, you know, I think it's six or eight seats in that lab, and we test on the Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, um, Excel, um, you know, all of those core, those, you know, those core Competencies. softwares. Yeah. But if you're talking about social media, or you're talking about business development, or you're talking about other things that, that don't have those assessment tools out there, something like Smarter can really help. And from my, sitting in my seat, when I'm looking at a, at a client company saying, here's somebody you really should consider, if they've done well in a smarter -er test and have earned a badge of expert or moderate in that, I think that that's a great quantifiable thing to bring to my client. Well, there's more data. Yeah, that's what you want. You want as much data as possible in terms of recruiting, correct? That's true. Because even in, with the best of people, recruiting is still a... It's not an exact science, and you want to have as much data as possible to increase your odds of success. Because so many things are out of your control in recruiting. You know, just last week we had someone offered a job at exactly the money she wanted, at exactly the job she wanted, and her boyfriend proposed, and they're moving to Minneapolis. I mean, it's human capital. Right. <laughs> so the hiring manager says, how can you let this happen? Who knew? Right. I mean, he and his jeweler, they knew. That was about it, you know? So um, human capital is hard. Is jeweler. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, um, so you control as much as you can control, and then the rest you just have to kind of go with it. So human capital is a really funny thing. Right. Uh, any other trends in the new year? Um, I don't know. We're we're hoping that manufacturing might go up a little bit. I think the employment numbers aren't, aren't out quite yet. We're seeing a lot of movement on the candidate side. A lot of hey, what's out there? A lot of people asking us, you know, have salaries changed at all? A lot of people not being as afraid to change organizations, but I'd say the health insurance and all of that has really put a little bit of fear in everyone. No one knows how that's going to change and what it's going to mean to their paycheck. And so that's, that's really tough. And so we've had already for maybe the last year and a half, while there's been more hiring, the hiring sequence has taken a longer time. Right. So it's been a very drawn out process. There's many, many applicants. You'll show a company, you know, two or three strong applicants and they'll want two or three more just like that so they can choose. So I think that's kind of a, there's hesitancy in the marketplace as we can see it. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Davis. This is Radio Entrepreneurs. We're speaking with Larissa Newworth uh, on hiring social practices in the new year. She's from John Leonard. Uh, Larissa, if someone wanted to get a hold of you, contact you, 
How would they do that? So my email is lneuwirth, L-N-E-U-W-I-R-T-H, at john, J-O-H-N, Leonard, L-E-O-N-A-R-D.com, or you can dial me direct at 617-348-2635. Great. Larissa, I know you're going to be back again this year. You've been one of our better guests, and you've, brought, you've introduced us to a lot of entrepreneurs. You can, we can also find you on our website. We're going to have post you, and we're also going to have you on our Facebook. So stay in touch, and uh, we'll see you soon. Great. Thanks for having me. Great. We'll be right back after this break on Radio Entrepreneurs.